Now we're going to talk about medieval manuscripts that were painted by or commissioned by women. One of the things we do know is that nuns worked as scribes and illuminators. And we know that because sometimes they would portray themselves or portray a woman uh, working in this fashion. And so we have this little detail from a medieval manuscript of a nun uh, working as a scribe, writing uh, on a manuscript. It would be in the convent or in uh, the abbey uh, that women would be able to practice as a manuscript illuminator, as a painter. Uh, and medieval nuns, um, I should explain that medieval nuns had to have a dowry. So they're usually going to be of the upper class or the middle class, and certainly the abbesses are generally going to be from the upper class, and they're going to be educated women. Uh, and the convents often had schools. So maybe not every single person in the abbey might be able to read and write, but that is where you're going to find the highest concentration of educated women who actually are practicing uh, reading and writing. Um, and some of them would be very, very highly educated, as we will, we will hear later. Uh, here's another example. In fact, this time uh, they have uh, the, the uh, illuminator, in this case evidently, because she's put a little uh, picture of herself with, uh, within the context of a capital letter. We call these historiated letters, when you have a picture inside the letter. Uh, and she's left her name, Gouda. So Gouda is a 12th century nun. Now, one of the women artists who we also know uh, as a painter because she left an inscription. We know nothing about her, uh, but her name is Ende. And she was the painter of one of the Spanish Beatus apocalypses. Okay, I've got to explain a little bit what that is. The apocalypse is the last book of the Christian Bible. It's the book of Revelation. And it is a vision that St. John the Evangelist had on the island of Patmos. In the 8th century, a Spanish monk named Beatus, Beatus of Libiana, wrote a commentary on the Apocalypse. And we have a number of medieval manuscripts from Spain uh, that are what we call the Beatus Apocalypse. And listen, in, in other words, it has Beatus's uh, commentary uh, with the book of Revelation. And these are illustrated. And they are in a number of different centuries. Uh, one of the earliest, uh, possibly the earliest, but I'm not certain of that, uh, is, from, is now stored in Girona in Spain, and we know them, we often talk about them from where they are. For example, the Morgan Apocalypse is in the Morgan Library in uh, New York. Well, this one is in Girona, um, so we could call it the Girona Apocalypse, but uh, let's take a look at it. Um, I guess I should talk to you a little bit about uh, the, the picture here. Uh, the crucifixion, of course, is not told in the Apocalypse. And I don't have a copy of Beatus' um, commentary. So I can only assume that he made some relationships between the crucifixion and what was being said in the Apocalypse. And this is very common. Um, medieval commentators often do this. They'll take different parts of the Bible and find uh, additional meanings and relate them uh, to things in the life of Christ. Um, but as you can see, you have a crucifixion here, uh, very brightly colored. And the design is, uh, the, uh, the figures are not at all realistic. You would not expect that at this, at this, in this place and in this time. And I do need to caution students because, of course, not all of you are art students and not all of you have taken something about medieval art. Um, sometimes I'll have students writing about these and they seem to think that they are not realistic in style. There's something wrong with them. Please get that out of your head. <laughs> uh, that will really bother me. Uh, because during the Middle Ages, you do have periods where there is uh, you know, some uh, classical uh, influence and you have more um, three-dimensionality. Uh, but much of medieval art 
is more abstract in style, which uh, many people feel it shows that it's a more spiritual style because it's not trying to imitate the uh, medieval, the, uh, the material world. Now that's not blanket, that doesn't cover every single work of art. But you can't say something is abstract, in other words, simplified, uh, that they're not showing uh, you know, accurate anatomy. Well, they're not Renaissance artists. Uh, you might be able to say this uh, for some artists in the 15th or 16th century or later uh, when they are trying to attempt uh, to create uh, believable art, but, but don't do it to medieval artists. So uh, what we have here is a brightly colored background with the apocalypse, excuse me, with the uh, crucifixion in the center. And I want to point out a few of the details uh, in the crucifixion. Uh, Christ is erect on the cross. He looks straight out at us. Uh, generally, we talk about two different types of Christ. Uh, one is the uh, suffering Christ, which actually comes in uh, a little bit later than this. And the other is the Christ triumphant, and this is what we're seeing here. Christ erect on the cross. Uh, he is uh, triumphing over death. We see at his feet a chalice, and he's bleeding into this chalice. And then up above the cross, you see some angels, and you also see two personifications of the sun on uh, our left, Christ's right, and the moon. You can see a little crescent there. Uh, those are personifications of the sun and the moon, and they are very, very frequent in uh, crucifixion images. Uh, Christ is flanked by the two thieves, and uh, you've probably heard the expression, the good thief, the thief uh, who is on Christ's right, who repents of his sin and calls upon Christ, and Christ says, you will be with me in paradise. And uh, so we see an angel coming to uh, take that thief's soul. On the other side is the bad thief who does not repent, and uh, you can see the red devil uh, uh, coming to remove his soul. Uh, you have the tormentors of Christ below, including two who are labeled, Longinus, who converts to uh, belief in Christ, and he is piercing Christ's uh, side with uh, the lance, the spear. And then on the other side, you have uh, Stephaton, uh, who is offering the sponge soaked in vinegar. Christ says, I thirst, and this is what they give him. Uh, possibly it's a painkiller, possibly just something bitter. We said that the artist was Ende, and some books she's called N, some books she's called Ende. So I assume that uh, in the manuscript, uh, the uh, name may be abbreviated. A lot of times they abbreviate words. They'll put a little uh, tilde, a little, a little uh, squiggly line or something, or a little straight line sometimes, uh, to indicate that there's an abbreviation. I haven't seen the manuscript. I haven't read the inscription. I'm just making an assumption there. But in the manuscripts, she writes that she has ende, and she uses, of course she's writing in Latin, she says she's a paintatrix, de pintrix, a female painter. In other words, she's using a feminine ending. And then she calls herself a helper of God, and you can see, uh, once again, uh, she's using a feminine ending here, which presumably means that she's a nun, uh, and that, uh, you know, she's, she is the painter here. Uh, it also means, mentions another painter who has a male name, a Mertrius. And the inscription indicates that he is helping Ende. Although I have seen books where they say, oh, a uh, the male artist is the one who is the, the painter, and the female artist is the one who is secondary. Um, but as I understand it, uh, the inscription indicates uh, that uh, the female painter was assisted by the male painter. Now, we want to look at this page. Uh, this is the page uh, showing the horror of Babylon, uh, riding uh, the beast with many heads. And uh, you can see how fancifully, uh, and a lot of, kind of a lot of fun, I think, they had to uh, figure out how they would show the beast uh, with uh, all of these heads coming out of it. And you may notice the tail has a little head, so that's a, another kind of uh, uh, fanciful, intriguing uh, little, little detail. 
Uh, this is shown with bands of color behind it, and most of these Beatus apocalypses are constructed that way, with the bands of very bright colors behind them. Uh, it does seem to be a part of the Spanish style. Uh, you might also notice the border has uh, uh, curving designs, and uh, generally medieval manuscripts have, uh, have uh, borders uh, with designs. Some of them look like fiber, some of them, um, you know, don't, if you remember from the introduction, we showed you the Ebo Gospels, and they had an acanthus leaf border, uh, obviously taken from classical manuscripts. And uh, this one, uh, I don't know if that's it, but it does remind me of uh, Spanish metalworking a little bit. Uh, Let's look at the horror of Babylon riding the beast. Uh, she is flat because this is the style of the time and uh, the artist has shown a lot of interest in pattern. So her dress has a, a kind of a checkerboard uh, pattern. Um, her head is, is pretty square too, it's very rectangular I should say. And uh, she's, uh, it's, you might say it's, it's basically a diagram. I think one thing that's really interesting to me about this detail is the fact that she's not in the exact center of the frame. So it gives you the sense that, it, that the beast is actually moving, that he's walking from one side to the other. Uh, and it also makes it uh, much more interesting visually, uh, gives it a sense of, of, of movement. Uh, this idea of using a lot of pattern, decorative forms, brightly colored man, um, brightly colored bands, that is uh, part of the style of the manuscript illustrations, and you do see that uh, throughout some of these 10th and 11th century Spanish illustrations, or st Spanish illuminations. Um, here's another little uh, word you may come across, a Moss Arabic. This is a Moss Arabic manuscript, and it's simply used uh, to describe uh, Christian work, in this case Christian art, uh, in Muslim Spain, because most of Spain at this time uh, was uh, Islamic. Uh, and then uh, through the centuries and uh, culminating in the 15th century, the, uh, the uh, Arabs and the uh, Muslims are expelled from Spain. Uh, now I want to show you two other pages from the Girona Apocalypse. Uh, and I just thought these were rather interesting. I don't have them as color pictures, uh, the uh, reproduction in the book that I took them from. They were black and white. Uh, so you see uh, on the, your left, uh, you see uh, an image that uh, seems to be uh, Christ among the heavenly hosts, uh, or you could say God among the heavenly hosts. Uh, the reason I say Christ is because he has a little nimmed halo, and that's the halo with the cross in, in it. Um, and I, I thought how wonderfully uh, the decorative angel wings are. Uh, and it's a very interesting use of space where you have the diagonal movement and then this uh, empty space of the page that really uh, becomes part of the image. Uh, on the other side, of course, a much more geometric pattern. Uh, and this one, uh, you can see with the God on his throne from the apocalypse, with the 24 elders of the apocalypse, and they uh, take their crowns and throw them on the crystal sea.